You're listening to the Valley Labor Report with David Story and Jacob Morrison. Adam Keller is, you know, he is he is our new co-host, and uh, he and David watched the last um, the 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 last uh, city council meeting that had the police review by the uh, HPCAC. And so uh, I wasn't able to watch that. Uh, Adam actually read most of the report, I think, or quite a lot of the report. And so they're going to... So, Adam, I'm going to throw it to you. What happened... Uh, what what happened at the city council meeting? What did the report say? Uh, You know, all all that kind of stuff. Just kind of break it down for us. Sure. And and let's catch people up that this this report was commissioned after the June 1st and June 3rd uh, Black Lives Matter protests in downtown Huntsville. Uh, If you remember, that's when peaceful protesters were met with tear gas and rubber bullets and pepper spray and unnecessary arrests. Beanbags. It was was a police riot by any, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, rational definition. Yeah. So... Uh, in, in response to activist backlash, the council commissioned this independent report uh, through the advisory committee. They had a couple of independent attorneys to assist them. And uh, unfortunately, the mayor and the city of Huntsville leadership took the approach that we can't have any conversations about policing or criminal justice, much less what happened on those two nights until the report's finished. Mm. A year later. Yeah. Yeah, So almost a year later, we've been waiting for this report so that, uh, you know, city council members and others could take their muzzle off and actually talk to the community publicly about how to make change in Huntsville. So the report came out. It's over 250 pages, I believe. Uh, haven't read every every word yet, but I've dived in quite a bit. I know many of our fellow activists have been doing the same. I want to, you know, give some credit that the report does not paint Huntsville in a very favorable light, uh, and. There were multiple agencies involved on those two nights, in particular June 3rd, where it got really, really ugly. You'd had uh, Madison Police Department, you had Madison County Sheriffs, and you had Aaliyah, uh, state troopers who, state who came in. And in fact, if you know, if you remember, there was a lot of talk about outside agitators. I mean, the only outside agitators yeah. were the state troopers <laughs> coming up here, uh, ready to bust heads. So. You know, I do give credit that the report did find quite a bit of, of, of facts. They reviewed a lot of body cam footage. They did solicit opinions from, from the uh, community. They interviewed people who were there. Interestingly enough, not a single Huntsville police officer was interviewed uh, because, uh, more or less, the city they of Huntsville made to. sure that that didn't happen. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, it sounded like, uh, from from what from what I took away from it, it sounded like the city attorney had advised the police uh, department that they could speak if they chose to in their own uh, accord, but that they would be given up their rights that are protected by the you know the uh, constitution, and, and basically he was saying if y'all talk to them. And you get a lawsuit, you're on your own. That's what it kind of sounded like to me, you know, yeah. and 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 rightfully so because the report, I think they said, it was 284, 85 pages. The report was very uh, intensive. The report was very damning for the police department because they had body cam. You know, regardless of talking to the police, they had this body cam footage of the police saying some pretty, some pretty damning things uh, on 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 their body cams, and uh, as well as evidence of when uh, some cops caught themselves realizing yeah. they were on, yeah, they had body cams and cut them off. Yeah, uh, are conveniently covered up their body cams and badge numbers. So, you know, I think there was no cooperation from the sheriff from Madison City uh, are from the state troopers. So we're still waiting to hear, I mean, if, if we're ever going to get anything from Sheriff Kevin Turner, I uh, would love to hear what he has to say about this because, you know, a, as a classic technique, they everyone likes to pass the buck, Yeah. right? So City of Huntsville wants to say, well, really, we weren't the worst guys. The worst guys were these other agencies. That they brought in. 
that they, they brought in specifically brought in. So I know there's been some uh, some legitimate criticism of the report and the committee's. Um, you know, maybe lack of teeth for for lack of a better phrase. I think there's truth to that. But even with what did come through is still pretty damning, as you said. And, you know, I, I pulled out some quotes. So I just want to read this. This was the night of June 1st in Huntsville, downtown Huntsville, the smart city, allegedly, the progressive star of Alabama. Quote, one officer was heard saying he hopes the protest is shown on the news and people realize they cannot play around in Huntsville because they don't play nice in Huntsville. And he was specifically talking about the police don't play nice. Oh, I, this, yeah. yes. This was a police officer speaking to another police officer. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and like, remember... There was not a single instance of even so much as property damage, much less violence, by the protesters in Huntsville. The only property damage happened because of a stray police uh, uh, police bullet. round, rubber bullet or something, yeah. uh, that then the protesters raised money for and donated to the business. The police didn't raise money for it. The community did. The community that was out there protesting. The police damaged the property. I mean, like, like by the definition of this new riot bill that's that's being pushed through, quote unquote, riot bill. It's a BS anti-protest, anti-First Amendment bill. If you want to find out more about that, you can listen to our interview with Alabama Arises Dev Wakely on our YouTube channel. But uh, uh, you know, under that definition, the police were literally rioting in Huntsville. I mean, lit, like that's what happened last year. Except for the fact that police they're not going to get arrested. Have immunity. Yeah. yeah, that's the problem. Is they yeah. have immunity for everything that they do. Yeah, right. And that's something that, as far as I know, is confirmed in this report and in the conversation at the city council that not a single person has faced any discipline for their actions on that night. Uh, are on those two nights, which included uh, pepper spraying yeah. people who were running away. Yeah. It included shooting people with rubber bullets. They're ripping uh, apart the calf of one person. I, yeah, yes. that's that's my, that was my friend. That was my that's friend. I know man. him. He couldn't walk literally for months. Like there was a, I mean, you were, it's, it's the fellow that used to come with us. Yeah. Um, he, he's now in, he's now in Michigan, but he, uh, he, he, he like, um, he, I had asked him to come on a picket line with us and he still couldn't walk straight like yeah. months later. Yeah, it was the, 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 the it it really speaks to the this this mentality that they have of being above the law. They are truly they they are unaccountable to anyone. And 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 I think one of the, one of the things that and, and maybe you can speak some more to this because I don't live in Huntsville. I just watched it because it was interesting. But one of the my, one of my biggest takeaways was the fact that we can that. Uh, there's no accountability to the Huntsville Police Department f- f- from the people because we can call in Madison County or we can call in the state troopers and guess what? They don't have to follow the same rules that we have to follow and they don't have to answer to who whoever is running the city and they don't have to answer to the citizens right that they've perpetrated these these atrocities against. right and something that you said adam is that they're not these these places the, these these agencies aren't cooperating or some of them are not cooperating with the investigation and like what would a cop say to you if they were just asking questions and they pulled you over uh you know like oh what are you hiding something like well, that's not all- only are they not cooperating the problem is Huntsville had the the police chief mm-hmm. has specifically said no rubber bullets. Mm-hmm. Well, guess yeah. what? Right, they were there used. Was. Madison brings in rubber bullets, starts Somebody shooting did. people. Madison, it was yeah. confirmed well, it was Madison County Sheriff's, and and there's no accountability, even though the, supposedly the city of Huntsville is supposed to be, uh, you know, the response to this. You know, I think the police chief McMurray wanted it both ways. I think yeah. Mayor Tommy Battle wanted it both ways. McMurray wanted to say it was his operation. Mm. Uh, but, you know, only the good parts, of course. Right, uh, right, McMurray of course. said that he did not agree with the use of armed snipers yeah. on the roof of the courthouse looking through their rifle scopes at mm. innocent civilians on our streets. Yeah, I mean, that what is one of the first thing, you know, and, and I thought about that when they said that because I'm a very active firearm owner. One of the first things whenever I'm training somebody on firearm usage is 
never point a weapon at something you're not ready to kill. It is just as plain and simple as that. And the fact that there were people with their rifles pointed into the crowd really speaks to the lack of 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 the, they should the lack of concern for no, not human concern, life not yes. concern but the fact that they shouldn't even be a firearm owner yes the police if should you not and I even know be this a firearm as owner. A, a couple country guys raised growing up yeah. you know, growing up with shotguns and rifles right. we know this yeah. Th- this is their job yeah. and why the hell does Madison the city of Madison have snipers mm-hmm. this isn't yeah. Fallujah yeah we're talking about a bunch of peaceful folks. The yeah. violence was initiated by the police. So to you know to to follow up on that point though, you know Chief McMurray says he didn't agree with snipers on the roof. Okay, so well, what's the didn't consequences? Have any control. You know, so you didn't have control, right? So you can invite these agencies into the city of Huntsville's limits, but then they're out of your hands at that point. Well, what he's claiming is the exact same thing that he's claiming against the protesters. What he has said about the protesters are they were outside agitators and they were losing control. And and what it, what this report has shown is he brought in outside agitators and he completely lost control of of who he of was supposed outside to be. Outside yeah, of right. who he was yeah. supposed to be managing. Well, and here's I just I, we have to hammer this home because. <laughs> Uh, Chief McMurray and his folks spread a big lie that there were uh, Antifa, that there were these radicals, outside agitators. I mean, he sounded like Bull Connor. Yeah. Uh, you know, this could have been a speech from the 60s. And supposedly and we were... He put up DSA North Alabama's logo on uh, on the thing where right. he was talking about, uh, you know, evil or violent organization. DSA North Alabama, who, by the way, you hear every, every week on this show... What is the their main thing that they're doing right now? They're holding a necessities drive for like to give back to the homeless community. people. Yeah. yeah, like these are the people that McMurray was warning people about before the president. But see, I mean, they don't oh count God. as part of our community, yeah, according right. to them. You know, members if you've of got DSA the wrong politics. You're not a part of this community, right. according to McMurray. Right. If you're a poor black person, if you are an immigrant, or if you're one of these crazy radicals who believes those people are actually human, then you don't count as part of Huntsville's community. You don't deserve representation. And so he gets out here, he spreads these lies, and they were lies, and he knew they were lies. Uh, And there's yet to be any accountability for that. Uh, You know, Sheriff Turner and Madison, city of Madison, they won't even talk about it, period. Uh, so, yeah, he lost control. And I also want to just give credit to the many activists and organizers who spoke Thursday night. They were eloquent. They were brilliant. They were bold. Um, I don't know who this brother from Detroit was because that's the first time I've seen him speak. But I really want to get to know him. So if you're out there listening today, which I doubt you are because you're probably not going to listen to this station. I wouldn't. Uh, but if you are. And you hear us? Get in touch with me. Reach out to me because I want to. I want to uh, talk to you some more. I mean, it's important. This guy's came in from Detroit, and he was he was just right on point, speaking and, from the heart. Yeah, yeah. And we need more people like him in yeah. the community. You know, so I think it can be overemphasized enough that this report was used as a delay tactic by right. city leadership to say, because. You know, CCJR, TVPA, all these organizations in the community have been pushing for criminal justice reforms since before George Floyd's murder. Yeah. Uh, You know, Tennessee Valley Progressive Alliance was talking about decriminalization of marijuana and expunging marijuana arrests inside city limits well before this happened. Yeah, Um, several years. Yeah, so, you know, they use this as an excuse to not talk about any reform. Now they have the report. And they're going to have a work session next week. And uh, Angela Curry pointed pointed this out in her citizen comments. So you spent two years talking about an amphitheater, you know, on University Drive, but you expect to fix all this in less than a week? Yeah. It took you 11 months to talk about two nights 
Yeah. And I'm glad mm-hmm. that they did because we have facts now. We have right. body camera footage showing police targeting innocent people, chasing after people trying to run away, mm-hmm. showing where they were trapped. And quite frankly, it looked pulling like an intentional cars, effort. Pulling them out of cars that had done right. n- n- nothing wrong. They, they were doing exactly what they were told, disperse. They try to get in their car to disperse and they're yanked out of their car. Mm-hmm. And let me call out Mayor Battle real quick. Uh, Mayor Tommy Battle, who wanted it both ways. He wanted to show up in the afternoon, advertise that he was there in the afternoon, take a knee, uh, you know, so he could show that photo op to the rich Yankee capitalists who want to invest here Mm -hmm. and show, oh, see, we're not really like Alabama. Don't put us, you know, don't think about Selma in the 60s. We're different now. So he did that. And then just a couple hours later, he gets to do a whole nother photo op for his friends in the White House, his friends Mo Brooks, mm-hmm. Donald Trump, to see, look, we know how to treat these, you know, hippies and radicals out in the streets. Yeah. Unleash yeah. the He's, dogs. Uh, so I truly believe in my heart of hearts this was premeditated. This yeah. was a planned police Dude, riot. You don't bring that me. I was watching the video. I didn't come over that night, but I was at home watching the live video. There was an endless line of state trooper. I mean, literally mm-hmm. hundred. I didn't even know that the state employed that many troopers coming yeah. down the road. I mean, it was those were your insane. tax dollars at yes. work, folks. Yeah. Your tax yes. dollars at work. Um, and this report also dispelled the rumors that there were people uh, buying up bricks and mm-hmm. you know well, acid. And it goes back and, to what Jacob was saying, and it needs to be reiterated and reiterated over and over again that it was a peaceful demonstration. And the only pro out of all of this craziness that the police want to claim was happening, the only property damage was a window shot out by the police. Mm -hmm. So if it was, you know, if it was such insanity, where is all the where is all the injured police officers? Where are all of the destruction of property at? You know, there there is none. Well, and I. One thing I will distinctly remember from that night, June 3rd, is I was sick and I was watching it at home and uh, saw a live stream with Channel 19, WHNT. They had a young black female reporter on the ground. They were live streaming on the ground while uh, Jerry Hayes, their longtime uh, you know, anchor, was on TV telling you not to believe your lying eyes. He was already painting the narrative of radical Antifa, uh, going over Chief McMurray's talking points, I guess hoping that you listened to him and not actually watched the video of his own damn reporter trying to avoid tear gas and pepper spray. Right. So, you know, you saw this collusion of various members of the Huntsville, you know, in North Alabama elite to attack innocent people, armed agents of the state. And now if you have a don't tread on me flag. Yeah. If you don't want to be tread on, who the hell do you think's treading on you? These people are dressed like stormtroopers and attacking middle-aged women who brought their kids to demonstrate because they believe that police brutality should come to an end. So that's how you meet a protest over police brutality is with more police brutality. Well, and, and you I want think, to paint ourselves as some kind of smart, progressive city. I think one of the things that, 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 that the Don't Tread On Me folks should take away from this, if, there, if, if there's one important thing that both sides can agree upon, is the lack of accountability mm-hmm. in the police department. And I'm not saying... I'm not saying that defund the police or anything else. If you don't believe in that, that's fine. But there should, at the bare minimum, there should be some community accountability within the police department. Our yeah. taxpayer dollars goes to fund these things. And you should not, no one should be able to do what they want uh, ad nauseum and walk away from it without having to answer questions. I mean, if I'm at my job and I destroy a piece of property accidentally or not, I'm going to have to go sit in an office and explain my actions. What caused this? Whether, you know, and if it's an accident, that's great. 
But if it's not, then you need to be held accountable for your actions. And then that's one thing that the right preaches yeah. consistently is accountability. Personal responsibility. Yeah, and that's one of the but yet we're not yeah, that's allowing. one of the problems that people ostensibly have with unions is that, oh, you know, oh, you don't have enough accountability. And, like, there is not a single union workplace where if there's uh, an allegation of misconduct or you're not doing your job where the workers can just say, I'm not gonna com- I'm not gonna comply with your investigation. I'm not gonna do I'm not gonna say anything at all. Like you've got it. Like there's got to be some amount of cooperation and uh and 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 accountability there. And there is in every other profession except law enforcement. Yeah. So I, I and I want to be fair here that the report also demonstrated that there were police officers on the ground who realized what was happening was not it was crazy uh you know they were called on camera saying these guys were peaceful they were called on camera the huntsville police department wondering what the hell the madison county county sheriff's was up to why were they escalating the situation uh many of the police officers clearly demonstrated that they were confused they didn't know uh what their expectations were for this kind of event uh But, you know, here's another one I want to make sure people see from this report. Uh, One video shows an officer asking another group of IRT officers. Now, IRT is basically like their riot control. Mm. So he goes up to the uh, group of riot control officers and asks, are you guys the arrest team? One of the Huntsville officers in this riot team responded, quote, no, we F people up. Now, that's your tax dollars there. Yeah. A squadron of people there to F people up. People who were peaceful. Yeah. People who were simply demanding that the Accountability. Police, accountability. Mm-hmm. Not even justice, but accountability. Yeah. Uh, I'm in, yeah. That's, it's uh, infuriating. It is a, an embarrassment to the city and to the region. And, and you know, it's important to point out that, you know, one of the, one of the takeaways was the, the, the own police officers on the body camera said, we're not trained. We're not trained Absolutely. for this, you know. So you've got these IRT people, these stormtroopers dressed up in all of this uh, bulletproof gear with 5.56s, five, five, ARs, and you're not trained. I mean, it's apparent you weren't trained oh, yeah, because you, you, is- you got your sights mm-hmm. set into the crowd to, to execute people, but also the people on the ground, not trained, not trained. Mm-hmm. So where's the accountability? And we're saying this because Huntsville, you've got – to hold these people accountable. It, you know, the, it, the, everything went fine this time other than some ripped apart calves and busted up windows. But what well, happens the next time? Well, and let me say this. We had a councilwoman, and I, I don't think she meant it quite the way it came out, but she actually remarked in her comments Thursday night that she was glad it didn't escalate more and it wasn't worse and that nobody was killed. Now, how absurd is that? That we have to be grateful yeah. that yeah. no one that gets killed kill at a peaceful protest. Yeah. Are we at that point in a supposedly free country yeah. with a supposedly small government, we have to be grateful we're not murdered? Yeah. Yeah, by the same people that are supposed to be protecting us. Yeah. Yeah, from I mean, who? It's a, protecting well, us from who? Adam, didn't you say that in the in the report there was a quote from a cop that was basically admitting that, oh, there's no reason for us to be here? Like, yes, uh, uh, yes. I mean, the report documented lots of police officers who weren't sure why they were there, uh, and also could set, could tell that other officers were escalating the situation. Uh-huh. Uh, and one of the saddest ones was where an officer was actually being mocked and you know joked on by fellow officers because he wasn't being violent enough. Jeez. <laughs> This person clearly realized, you know, this protester was not a threat. There's no need for me to pepper spray them in the face. And he's getting made fun of by the other cops around him. Hopefully he realized that he's in the wrong profession. Yeah. I hope so, too. I mean, sadly, you know, those are the people we should want, right? Someone who actually has a a heart Mm -hmm. and empathy. What if I was on the other side of this pepper spray? Yeah. What if it was my child? Yeah. being shot with a rubber bullet. Yeah, But that goes back to the point we made earlier, uh, and it comes through cl- loud and clear in this report, that among a large section of the officers there, and certainly among the leadership, the people giving them orders, they did not view those protesters as part of the community. Right. They did not, did not view them as their neighbors and their fellow human beings. 
Yeah. And that's what's disgusting about it. And this city runs on federal funds. Yeah. This city runs on, and, and, you know, I know I'm going to make some enemies with this, but let's face it, the military industrial complex is the economy of this region. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and so I, I think there is some ties to that. I still want to know where did the Antifa rumors come from? Yeah. Who all was feeding those rumors? Uh, because that made the situation so much worse. I mean, you had businesses on Airport Road, miles away from downtown, <laughs> thinking they had to board up their windows. Yeah. Well, Just completely police, asinine. I that mean, so, that because the report showed that the police were telling yeah. them that. Yeah. Right. So right. I don't know what to say. So what are what was the we've got like about a minute left. What are the next steps that this report laid out and that came out at like what what happens next? What happens next is that I believe uh, the 28th of next week, there's going to be a city council work session uh, where they're going to actually talk about what next steps, what are the uh, reforms to come out of this. Uh, but uh, I think we got to join up with our brothers and sisters, NCCJAR, TVPA, other groups pushing for for change, uh, not just about the way they handle protests, but a way they operate criminal justice in this city. Yeah. Yeah. And I think yeah. one of the council po- people, I can't remember his name, the black gentleman that was on the far right, you know, he mentioned that he deals with this in his community every day, that this wasn't a two day isolated event. Right. And I think that's important to point out right. that, yeah. that this isn't, this didn't happen and end on that one day. His, well, yeah. his community f- members see this type of oppression every day. Right. Well, we've seen it more than just those two days. Yeah. Uh, I spoke at a remove the monument rally and there were snipers up on the roof of the courthouse there for a for a, a rally that had like 50 people there uh, and at our labor for black lives rally where all the unions in the area came together uh, there were cops on their scanners talking about how they wish they could shoot us and then one of them came in and like corrected him and was like yeah we've got munitions you know we don't don't want to kill them basically is what he was saying but I mean yeah it's not just this one day incident uh, so folks uh, this is it for this week we will see you Next, if you want to see what we are up to throughout the week and get our snide quips about the news of the day, then you should follow us on social media. We're on Facebook at Facebook.com slash The Valley Labor Report. We're on Twitter at Labor Reporters. I'm on Twitter at Jacob M underscore A-L. David is on Twitter at Radical Unionist. That's spelled R-A-D-I-C-L Unionist. If you missed part of the show and want to go back and watch it later, you can search YouTube for The Valley Labor Report and subscribe. Subscribe to our channel. You can go back and watch the full show there. And we clip segments that we release throughout the week. So you can just watch one topic or see, you know, something that finds interesting. We've got our whole catalog of shows on our YouTube channel. We do upload the program on more than 11 different podcasting apps. So to see if we are on your listening platform of choice, you can go to the Valley Labor Report dot transistor dot FM slash subscribe. We've got a website where you can buy our fantastic union-made hats, our union-made stickers, our union-made bumper stickers. It is thevalleylaborreport.org. We had uh, two more hat orders this week, so that is great. Looking for more next week. If you appreciate our work and want to keep us on the air, then finally, you can consider throwing us a couple dollars a month on patreon.com slash thevalleylaborreport.org.